The Love Script with Paul D. Hanna. Greetings and salutations. This is PDH with another Love Script coming at you live, pre recorded. <laughs> Hoping everybody's doing well. Thank you for checking in and being a part of this movement of love. Our goal is to educate, inspire, and to express our position of love in the universe, in this world. So we're glad that you're here. Today we want to talk about the importance of building memories in a relationship. Now, this sounds really simple, but it's not. Uh, If more people build positive memories, positive experiences to pull from, uh, they have something to lean on when things get tough. Relationships fail because people aren't prepared for relationships. Marriages fail because people aren't prepared for marriage. As the old saying goes, if you don't prepare to succeed, you're preparing to fail. Or something like that, right? The idea is that you have to put in the work to make a relationship work. It's not something that's going to work on its own, especially after that first three months, six months, when it's just so good and gooey sweet that you can't stand to be away from each other. Those times don't last forever. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that's a negative thing. Growth and maturity comes from uh, resolving difficult things. Um, When you're in the gym working out, trying to build muscle, you have to actually tear muscle so that it comes back and grows back bigger and stronger. You have to push your heart rate beyond the limit that is comfortable in order to get into shape. And marriage and relationships are the same. You have to put yourself in a position uh, to grow and mature. The one inevitable thing as a couple you will encounter is a rough patch, a hill to climb, some foolishness brought on by you or somebody else. A dark season, you know, whatever you want to call it, it's coming. Um, That tough time. And it doesn't matter how well suited you are for each other, how perfect your spiritual walk is, how faithful you are to one another. That tough time is coming. It will. I call these times the storm days. As with all things, some storms are worse than others, but it's still a storm. Whether it's just sprinkling or it's hailing two inch uh, rocks of ice, it's still a storm. That's why one of the greatest skills, in my opinion, that you can obtain as a couple is the ability to resolve conflict. Because when conflict comes, most of the time, as as couples or people in relationship, we don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to empathize. We don't know how to humble ourselves. We don't know how to be patient. We don't know how to listen. These are all conflict resolution skills that we don't have. So when the tough times come, your storm kit is empty. And we all know what happens when that happens, right? You get swept up. You fail. You end. We don't want that to happen. 
And it's, you know, it's also important to your success as a couple during all times that you have something positive to pull from. And truthfully, it doesn't even have to be hard times. You know, there's some days that you just need inspiration as a couple. I call these the average gray days. It's a photography term on, you know, an even color, right? It's just um, not a day that you hate their guts and not a day that you're gooey in love. It's just blah, right? You ever feel like that? Just blah. You know, days where there's really nothing wrong. Um, But everything that person does seems to get on your nerves that day. They leave a cup out. They brush their teeth too loud. (laughs) They chew too loudly. They walk too loudly. Um, They ask you the dumbest question in the universe, and it just makes you want to pull the hair out of your head. You don't like their cologne. You don't like their perfume. You don't like their outfit that day. You just feel blah. And during this time, you know, sometimes you need a jolt of love, positivity, or just some, mm, you know, a little bit of mm, to the re-spark that love thing in your relationship. Creating memories together to pull from during these times is a great tool to have in your storm kit. Now, there's obvious things that you want to do as as a couple, right? Take trips together, have romantic dinners, um... You know, these things are pretty common or should be pretty common. But how about we get a little more creative? Because today I'm going to give you three very creative things that you can do as a couple to build memories together. And these things will help you during the storm. It'll help you when things get tough, right? So number one photographs everybody has a smartphone right everybody has the ability to take pictures but what do you do with those pictures once you're done with them post them on instagram or on twitter or on facebook but there are other things that you can do now if you're married it's interesting because when you get married one of the big one of the biggest expenses is uh buying Uh, or hiring a photographer. Now, if you know what's good for you, you're gonna spend a lot of money on the right photographer because the dress will be in the closet, the food will be long gone, the music will be long gone, but the pictures will last forever. So a lot of your money in the wedding budget will go toward pictures, right? But how often do you actually go back and look at that wedding photo album? Once a year, once every five years, on the anniversary, right? But that day when you get married is usually the most loving and beautiful day of your relationship life. That's the day that you chose to commit your life to someone else. That's the day that your friends, your family um, are all there to wish you well. People you don't even like are there to wish you well. And yet you don't go back and re-experience that moment um, with your wedding video and your wedding photography. Uh, You paid all that money and you never look at the book. Why not have a standing date once a quarter, once a year to pull out the wedding album and maybe even your vows written on paper, right? How about that? How about taking a moment to actually read your vows again? I mean, those were, particularly if you wrote your own vows, what most people do, I think, these days. So if you wrote your own vows, why not take a moment to read them to one another or read the other person's vows out loud 
Uh, these are things that will create lasting memories and also help to strengthen your relationship by bringing those positive emotions and feelings back to the surface. Do it over dinner, somewhere special. Sit next to each other and remember the magic of that day. I mentioned all those pictures in your phone and the pictures you take when you're out together at a concert or a special event. Why not take the last six months of pictures and create an album? Uh, Mixbooks.com or Milkbooks.com or even Shutterfly have great deals on photo albums. Why not create a photo album and then once a week, once a month, uh, take those albums and pull out a random one and sit and, and uh, over some romantic um, music in the background and remember that day or those days. And this is simple stuff, but creative stuff that will help your relationship. I know some of you guys roll your eyes like, I'm not doing that. Okay. Okay. All right. No problem. But what I will tell you is that if you don't make these efforts in your relationship, it won't last. And even if you stay together, miserable or unattached, disconnected, ambiguous with each other that's not the kind of relationship your life was meant for right so it's my advice you can take it or leave it but I guarantee you these things will help you and help your relationship there's a lot of psychological mumble jumble behind it that I won't get into but take it at face value it'll help you and again, obviously, with any of these ideas, you can twist them and, and become more creative and do it in a way that fits for you and your boo. You know, I'm not trying to tell you how you have to do it, but these are just some ideas. Um, these are just some ideas that you can do. So one of the things I like to do is whenever I take a trip, I take all those photographs from the trip and, and I put them all in a Dropbox or something like that and I create a photo book out of those pictures you can do it for your vacations like I said concerts or even just a special night out when you just know you are looking good do it for that day too number two there is something called the wine box ceremony um, that is implemented when you get married you can choose to do it when you get married and I'm not sure who came up with this idea but it's brilliant I love it it's a great idea and for those of you who drink um, you know you get some wine too I don't drink but I will have a glass of wine a few times a year for health reasons right so uh, the idea is that when you get married you put a bottle of wine in a box and you bury the box in the backyard or you put it somewhere uh, that you know is not in plain sight or uh, somewhere that is locked away and after five years you open it and celebrate it cool right you open it after five years and say hey we made it it's a milestone it doesn't mean that hey we've uh, overcome everything in our lives or we've accomplished this uh, great goal but it's a milestone and every milestone is important I like to twist it a little bit. You know, first thing I ask is why wait five years? You can do this every three months. Attach it to a goal. Maybe it's weight loss or increasing your savings or giving up something that you need to give up. You know, for those of you who may still have the habit of smoking or maybe you drink too much or whatever it is, um, commit to giving it up and in three months, you know, pull it out and celebrate. The idea is to set a goal and hide the wine and three months later open it and make a special evening out of it. You want to take it even further? Take turns putting something special in the box in three months. Um, take turns putting something special in the box. You know, one day you put something, at one point you put something in the box, at another point uh, your special someone puts something in the box and put it away for three months and then open it together. 
surprising the person who wasn't involved with putting it, uh, putting that something inside of it every three months. Now that's cool. Maybe it's a thumb drive of that has a video on it of your outing somewhere. And, you know, everybody can do that with iMovie or whatever. Uh, it takes little to no effort, 30 minutes to an hour. And you can have a cool little five or 10 minute video of a, a special day that you shared. Uh, maybe you put concert tickets in the box of an upcoming event. You can do anything. Just cre get creative with it. But I love the idea of setting goals in the future because as a couple you need something to look forward to everybody gets bogged down in the mundane everyday life stuff so you need something to look forward to you know that's what vacations are for me you know i work 12 14 hours a day sometimes and all i can think about is may june september I go on vacation four or five times a year because I need something to pull me through the tough dog days of working crazy, crazy hours. Number three, and this is kind of cool. I like this one too. Make a combined bucket list. Uh, this is one of my favorites that I've come up with. Did you see the movie Bucket List with Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman? They star as two older gentlemen who are terminally ill, who set up on a road trip to experience the things that, uh, you know, that are on their wish list. And it's a it's a pretty cool movie, too, if you haven't seen it. It's, it's pretty funny. I haven't seen it in some years. But the idea is that you decide on a day in the future to put your list together. Then on that day, go to the park, have a picnic with sexy fruit and all the sweet things that make you feel good. Come up with a list of five things. Not small things that you can accomplish with a little effort, but larger things. You'll have to determine what larger means for you or what big means for you. But there should be, there should be things that you have to work toward. Not something that you can snap your finger and do, right? Here's a few examples. Learn a new language together. Man, when I went to Paris for the first time, my dream was I, you know, I bought this Rosetta Stone that sat on my bookcase for probably three years. But when I finally set um, my trip in motion to go to Paris, first thing I wanted to do um, was learn French. And so me and my special someone sat down and we started learning French together. And I thought that was so dope. I thought that was so cool. Maybe you have never been to New York and you both want to see a Broadway play or a Broadway show. There's nothing like Broadway in New York walking down the street. I, I like it in wintertime. You know, when it's cold outside, you got to put that trench coat on and the gloves and you're looking all fresh and dapper underneath. That's such a cool scene, in my opinion. And you make a whole trip of it. You stay in Manhattan, you know, stay in Times Square. Um, and you go see a Broadway show. Maybe it's a cruise around the world. Maybe it's buying an RV and road tripping across America. Taking another big trip, maybe Rome or Greece. Greece has been on my bucket list for a while. I, I love the idea of going to Greece because I like Greek, Greek mythology. But that's been on my bucket list for a while. Maybe it's Australia for you, Japan, Thailand, Fiji. Go to the day line, you know, where you go so far in the world that it's a different day. Now that's an experience. Maybe you both are experts on something and you can sit down and write a book together and get it published. Seeing you and your special someone on the cover of a book with your names and it's something that's a labor of love for you 
just would be so rewarding. That would be cool to see, right? And it's regular stuff, skydiving, or maybe getting in shape to run a marathon, or skiing in Aspen. Whatever it is, it should take some work to build up to. That could be saving money, getting in shape, or whatever. The trick is to make sure they are joint goals, and you have to work as a team. That's why that five point bucket list has to be something you come up with together. It's about you and them and nobody else in the world. And you may be thinking, I don't have time for any of this. Yes, you do. We have as much time as we make. And if you don't make your relationship a priority, it will not last. Trust me. Well, that's my advice. I'm glad you stopped by and I'm wishing you nothing but love and positivity and all good things. This is PDH, all love and no hate. I'll catch you next time on The Love Script. Peace. You've been listening to The Love Script with Paul DeHanna. Follow us online at PDH Love Script YouTube, The Love Script, and TheLoveScript.com.